Uh, our perception is that in general the issue of growth, stability and balanced growth is something that in general is affecting all the countries around the world. Obviously there has been an important issue within industrial countries recently, but more generally what we're observing is a general slowdown of growth in both emerging markets together with industrial countries. So in that respect we do plan to place a lot of emphasis on what is known as the framework for strong, sustainable and balanced growth, which is basically the mechanism through which countries have achieved agreements in terms of the types of policies that sh they should be following going forward in order to strengthen their patterns of growth and development going forward. In that respect, what we will try to push for is first to actually do a very quick implementation, as quick as possible, of all the commitments that have previously taken place, which include the commitments that were included in the current action plan, uh, but also previous commitments by different countries. Also improving the way in which we actually follow whether countries are fulfilling their commitments or not. As well as a set of reflections about whether we need to carry out additional policies uh, not only by industrial countries, but by all the membership of the G20 in order to try to promote uh, better growth developments uh, which could potentially be reflected and should be reflected in a Los Cabos action plan. In general, uh, we think that obviously any country should be following the type of fiscal measure that they consider that are appropriate for their national circumstances. However, uh, in the particular case of Mexico, we're not envisaging pursuing these type of taxes. And here, the reflection is that uh, while the Tobin tax may be a relatively good response in some cases where the financial system has actually been following unsustainable practices, and uh, therefore the local authorities might be seeing this as a complement uh, to regulatory and prudential measures. In the case of a country like Mexico, where the financial system still needs to have a significant level of additional development going forward, we think that the imposition of these types of taxes could actually complicate the development of the financial system going further. So in that respect, uh, for the time being, we're not considering uh, the development or the generalized approval or adoption of these types of, of instruments, but obviously we are not going to be making uh, particular criticisms in case some countries in the G20 actually decide to go ahead and put some of these types of instruments. I think we need to work along two lines. A first line uh, is continuing the work that was already done by the financial presidency in particular last year, which has to do uh, with sort of reviewing different factors, not necessarily uh, related directly with the production of foodstuffs that may have generated distortions in the demand or the supply of different, uh, of different commodities. In the case of the French presidency, a lot of emphasis was placed on the possibility that financial markets were not working properly and could have led at some point to spikes in uh, commodity prices and in particular foodstuffs. Uh, we would also want to look at the possibility that different government policies, different subsidies, different taxes or different trade restrictions could actually be contributing to spikes and to volatility in foodstuffs and in commodity prices. So one first dimension that we think we need to look at is possible distortions that are arising due to specific government policies. It's not only financial markets, there may be government interventions that actually have contributed to some of this volatility. That's one dimension. Though clearly, when you take a long-term point of view, uh, I think that it's fair to assume and to think that 
uh, population growth will continue going forward, relatively fast growth in some emerging markets will continue going forward, and that will be leading to pressures for increases in demand and pressures for increases in agricultural prices. So uh, really to find a solution in the medium and long term, what we need to find is ways in which we can make sure that the supply and the production of foodstuffs and commodities more general actually manages to keep up with the increasing levels of demand. So in that respect, we will need to start work and we will need to try to promote in the G20 as a whole a set of policies that actually contribute to higher production through things such as higher availability of financing, better infrastructure, and potentially additional technological change, such as the Green Revolution that we observed in the 70s, through which we can make sure that the increase in supply of foodstuffs is sufficient to be able to meet this increasing global demand. We will need to have a higher amount of resources. There are a lot of countries for which, which actually require to have a larger amount of resources for a mitigation, adaptation policies, which are very important. Many of these are relatively small countries, which clearly require international support uh, from the global community in order to be able to face the problems of, for example, climate change in a successful way. At the same time, we need to follow also a policy where uh, sort of the larger countries, and here the G20 clearly has a very important role to play, assume a greater part of the responsibility in pushing for solutions to uh, global environmental issues such as global warming and where we actually need to forge and to get a set of different arrangements and compacts relating to things such as the removal of subsidies associated with fuel consumption, uh, the possibility of conforming and guaranteeing a green fund with sufficient resources, uh, as well as other areas where you have uh, different policies that should be promoted, but now in this case also by national states, things such as, for example, better investment in transport infrastructure, which makes sense from an environmental point of view, and it also makes sense from a developmental point of view.